check out this list. Richie Havens, Doyle Dykes, Eric Clapton, Paul Simon, John Denver, Bonnie Raitt, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Tom Petty, Jeff Buckley, Mississippi John Hurt. What do they all have in common? They've all played Guild Guitars. Guild Guitars has made and is making some very fine acoustic instruments. And today I'm gonna share with you my 10 favorite. Hey TAC family, welcome to episode 253 of the Acoustic Tuesday Show. This show is designed to inject your guitar journey with a weekly dose of fun, focus, progress, and inspiration. After we talk about Guild Guitars today, we'll be reviewing some comments from the two-hand tapping episode. And those comments include a first-hand experience of discovery by one of our very own Acoustic Tuesday viewers. You're also gonna see what the TAC family is working on today. It's a guitar lick entitled Bathroom Break, and you'll see why when we review it. And of course, your weekly dose of of acoustic news awaits, which includes an avalanche of new music, some unexpected covers, and much, much more. But first, let's dive into the world of Guild acoustic guitars. I wanna share with you 10 guilds that made a huge impact on me. I feel like Guild is one of those guitar brands that has a cult following. People are rabid about Guild guitars, and I never was until I encountered the instruments that I'm gonna share with you today. I've got 10 of them and I just wanna dig right in. Now, some of these instruments I've played firsthand and they've had a huge impact on me. Some of these instruments I've heard firsthand, somebody else playing them and they've made a huge impact on me. And some of these instruments I've only seen and heard through videos on YouTube. While there's only a few of those, they made such an impact on me, I wanted to include them. In fact, that brings us to the number 10 spot. And that is the Richie Havens guitar, a Guild D40. Coming in at number 10, this is an instrument to me that has all the body, all the warmth and woodiness, kind of the, the, the signature Guild tone, if you will. And my good friend, Jeremy the Guitar Hunter, recently reviewed, I believe, a 1971 Guild D40. And you'll see why this instrument had a huge impact on me. I mean, it knocked my socks off. It is a very complete sounding instrument. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. Number nine is the Guild OM120. This is a newly made Guild from their Westerly collection, which is a collection of guitars that are made overseas. However, they feature all solid woods. The OM120 is all solid African mahogany, the top, the back, the sides, and this thing sings like an angel. If you happen to like all mahogany guitars, that mellow, thumpy, round bass sound, this guitar has it all, and it comes in under $1,000. When I played this instrument, I was rendered speechless because I couldn't believe the sound that was coming from an instrument that cost less than a thousand bucks. You have to hear it, and that's what we're gonna do right now. Number eight is a Vintage Guild F50. This is the Jeff Buckley guitar. Now, why do I love this instrument? Well, number one, it's a jumbo. And I think Guild's secret sauce is making jumbos that not only offered a ton of volume, great bass response, but they retained clarity. This guitar is a shining example. This is an older instrument. I believe this one that you're gonna hear is from the 60s. And what I love about this guitar is the back and sides. It's made out of maple, which gives you the clarity, but it's also arched. And I think this is a very signature Guild development, if you will. I don't know if they were the first ones to do it on a flat top steel string acoustic guitar, but I can say that of all the guilds that I've played, the ones with the arched back seem to have this focus. And when you pair that with the jumbo body, wow, just wow. Here, here's how it sounds. A 
a 12 string is next. I do believe guilds are synonymous with 12 strings. In fact, when I mentioned that Stevie Ray Vaughan played a guild, it was on the MTV Unplugged series that Stevie Ray Vaughan used a 12 string guild. And he pretty much manhandled the thing. I feel like Stevie Ray Vaughan's hands are, are, are the strongest hands ever to play guitar. That's besides the point. Uh, the number seven spot is held by the Guild F1512. This is an import 12 string, one of the best imported 12 strings I have ever heard plain and simple. It's got the jingle. It's got the jangle. It's got the shimmer. It's got the elegance that you want from a 12 string, but also it has the power. Now, usually with, at least in my experience, usually with imported 12 strings, you get this supreme lack of bass. There's this very hard edged treble that these imported 12 strings produce. Not the case with the F1512. This thing is solid. This thing produces a wonderful, robust bass response, and it still does, again, retain that jingle jangle that, while well, we all love from a 12 string. Let's give it a listen. did not see this next one coming. I can guarantee it. Plain and simple, you could have never guessed it. The Guild B240E comes in at number six. It is a flat top steel string acoustic bass. It holds this position in my list for a myriad of reasons. And the first of which is that Guild is one of the only manufacturers making an affordable flat top steel string acoustic bass. The second reason that's on my list, it sounds awesome. Now, I usually feel that flat top steel string acoustic basses are kind of puny sounding. Generally speaking, the body cannot reproduce the bass frequencies required. Uh, case in point, the Martin B15. This is an all mahogany steel string flat top acoustic bass, a really cool instrument. However, I feel like it doesn't replicate bass frequencies very well, and it can get very lost unless it's plugged in. The B240E made by Guild is awesome because it actually has cutting power. Sitka spruce top, a shorter scale length, so not only does it sound clear, it's really comfortable to play. Let's go ahead and hear the Guild B240E. Number five is the Guild 512 with maple back and sides. This is a 12 string, yes. And my notes say this, hell yes with clarity and projection. Again, uh, a Guild I do believe is synonymous with 12 string instruments and the 512 with maple back and sides is a shining example. Because if you want that extra shimmer, little glitz, a little uh, little glitter on your strings, not actual glitter, but kind of the, the sonic equivalent of glitter, the 512 with maple back and sides is it, plain and simple. It has this wonderful articulation where, you know, with 12 strings, usually you get this wash of sound. However, with the maple back and sides, each string set, each course of strings speaks rather clearly, even when you're strumming. Uh, and I thought that, that this was just a feat that was accomplished extremely well by the 512 with maple back and sides. And uh, well, you can hear it for yourself. Here it is. <laughs> Guess what's in the number four spot? A Guild F512. You're thinking to yourself, Tone, you just said the Guild F512 was in the number five spot. How can it also occupy the number four spot? Well, just think back just a little bit. Uh, the number five spot was held by the Guild F512 with maple back and sides. Coming in at number four is the Guild F512 with rosewood back and sides. Now, I have to blame Charlie Parr for this one. Uh, we played a gig, this was last year, two years ago, 
I'm losing track of time. We played a gig at some point. He busted out this 12 string. He had just gotten it. And it was a 512 with rosewood back and sides. Magical combination. Uh, quite simply, a full, robust sounding 12 string. Not puny at all. It has clarity, it has articulation, it has projection, and it has this wonderful musical set of overtones that match so well with a 12 string. I mean, it is truly a, a megaphone of sound. It is a it is a tsunami of sound, if you will, but not too much to where it's brash, not too much to where you're like, whoa, whoa, chill out. I feel like the 512 Rosewood is an extremely well-balanced 12 string and one you need to hear. He had a galaxy, two hubcaps and three on the tree. But in his mind, it was fast. Coming in at number three is one of those instruments that I've only heard online. And I've actually heard it in a very famous recording as well. The number three spot is held by a vintage Guild F30, specifically the F30 that Mississippi John Hurt owned and played at the Newport Folk Festival. This guitar is pure magic. Like I said, I, I've never played it personally. I've listened to it on numerous occasions. Uh, it was, again, formerly owned by Mississippi John Hurt. It is currently owned by John Oates. The guitar sounds amazing. It's got the finger-picking tone embedded in it. Finger-picking tone is part of the genetics of this guitar. And you'll hear it. It just, it just sings. It just plain and simply sings. Here's John Oates playing Mississippi John Hurt's Vintage F30. <laughs> Speaking of Mississippi John Hurt, before we move on, I do want to mention that there is currently a fundraiser going on to fund a Mississippi John Hurt documentary. This is a documentary that we need. Plain and simple. Uh, if you go to GoFundMe, search Mississippi John Hurt, that documentary fundraiser will come up, and uh, please donate if you can. Uh, and if you can't donate, don't worry, you can still help. Go ahead and spread the word. Let your guitar geek buddies know. I would love absolutely love, selfishly and for the good of the acoustic guitar community, I would love for this documentary to happen. Because, as I mentioned, I just think it's it's extremely important to uh, to retain the history and, and guitar gifts that Mississippi John Hurt offered all of us. If you've ever finger-picked the guitar in any way, shape, or form, you can trace that back to Mississippi John Hurt. So, again, check out that fundraiser uh, when you have the time, and spread the word about it, because in a matter of mere moments, we could actually make it happen. Uh, the goal is $25,000, and uh, that means, well, if 25,000 people watching the Acoustic Tuesday show all contributed a dollar, well, boom, we'd have that goal hit. We're an army of guitar geeks. We can make this happen. Okay, uh, moving on to the number two spot. Coming in at number two is the Nick Drake guitar. Now, this is a little bit of a misnomer because Nick Drake held this guitar on the cover of, I think it's Brighter Later. He held a Guild M20. I didn't even get to the guitar's name. Uh, coming in at number two is the Guild M20. Uh, this is an instrument that, again, uh, the Nick Drake guitar, a bit of a misnomer because he simply held the guitar on an album uh, uh, cover shoot, and I don't think he used it on the recording. However, the guitar has this wonderful, mellow, reserved, woody, pillowy sound that it, it's so good. It's good for strumming, it's good for finger picking, it's good for alternate tunings. Now I'm talking about a newly made Guild M20. They're currently making these in the US, all solid mahogany. Mwah. Absolutely beautiful. If you thought the OM120 was good, wait until you hear this guitar, the Guild M20. Here we are at the number one spot. Coming in at number one is the Guild M20. Yep, I did it again. I did it again. But let me be clear, coming in at the number one spot is a vintage Guild M20. The only thing better than a newly made M20 by Guild is a vintage M20. 
these guitars have a tendency to develop into these robust tonal cannons the more years they get behind them. And to me, nothing beats an M20 that has had years and years of playing put into it. Also, there's a certain color of these vintage M20s that I just can't get over. It is a beautiful guitar color. In fact, I would even motion for Crayola to make a crayon that is vintage Guild M20 because it's a very signature color. You'll see what I mean. Now, I've always thought of it like this. You know, a new guitar is made with all these different pieces of wood. You got the top, you got the back, you got the sides, you got the bracing, you got the neck, you got the fingerboard. Now, all of these pieces of wood have come from different trees and they've all been thrown into this thing called a guitar. So they're just kind of uh, getting to know each other, right? They're, they're just kind of, a, it's, like a, it's like a guitar wood mixer. Whereas a vintage guitar, those pieces of wood have built a relationship through the years. And all of a sudden they're working together. They're working in concert with one another, creating this wonderful resonant instrument. The Vintage Guild M20 is that thing in a nutshell. Let's go ahead and give it a listen. As per usual, it is now your turn to chime in on the conversation. In the comments below, let me know your favorite Guild acoustic guitar. This could be a newly made Guild, it could be a vintage Guild. Whatever the case, I wanna know, go ahead and let me know in the comments below. Now, uh, while you're doing that, or maybe after you type, go ahead and take out your guitar. It's now time to see what the TAC family is working on today. Every week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we focus on one of the five essential categories of guitar improvement. On Mondays, it's a technique challenge. Tuesdays, a guitar lick challenge. Wednesdays, an improvisation challenge. Thursdays, a rhythm guitar challenge. And Fridays, a chord transition challenge. It is Tuesday. The TAC family is working on a guitar lick and here it is. Your Tuesday TAC guitar lick challenge is entitled Bathroom Break. Now, this is a necessary part of any road trip, and that's actually the theme within Tony's Acoustic Challenge this week, summer road tripping. But the actual musical theme is using your thumb, using your thumb in a slightly unconventional way. You know, normally with finger style guitar, the thumb is in control of the downbeats, right? One, two, three, four. You could play a pattern like this. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And one and two and three and four. Right, and you'll notice that the thumb, all it's doing is activating strings on that downbeat, any numbered beat. Well, this week within Tony's Acoustic Challenge, we kind of turn that on its head and we're using the thumb exclusively on those numbered beats, the downbeats, and on the and beats, the upbeats. So it's quite a little bit of a twist and something that most players are not used to. But this technique is really awesome in ragtime and blues guitar. And it also opens up a world of possibilities when it comes to finger style guitar. So let me go ahead and play this lick for you. Pay special attention to the thumb. It's a beautiful sounding lick. I'll say that first and foremost, but pay attention to the picking hand because it's gonna look a little strange because every single note on this is activated with the thumb. Okay, here's how it sounds. Pretty cool stuff, it has this cool flow. It does utilize the bass end of the guitar, which makes it ripe for the picking <laughs> in terms of a, a bass led chord transition or just a bass led lick back to the tonic. In this case, it's in the key of E major. The tonic is an E major chord or an E note. Okay, uh, but first, before I get into the details of this tack fam, if you wanna learn this note for note, please log in. This is your daily challenge. Click start challenge, that'll take you to the teaching video. I'll teach it to you note for note. Once you get it under your fingers, move to the play along video, pick a speed that is comfortable for you, and then go ahead and click that tab icon in the lower right hand corner. That'll allow you to pull up the tab right next to the video, and you can have those two things uh, nice and side by side, so you can have a, just a great learning experience as you're getting familiar with this. Okay, this lick, what is it good for? Well, first and foremost, it's a really great fill, okay? If we even take just the first measure, you can be finger picking an E major chord, take that first measure and throw it in there, come back to the E major chord. That would sound something like this. It's a 
me a while to get it smooth, but you get the idea. I actually came at it a little bit too quick. This is a more of a laid back um, kind of a lick because it's using the thumb. And since we're only using a single finger, you might have to dial back the tempo. That's okay. You can do things slowly. It's, there's no, this is not a race, right? There's no win or there's no ideal tempo. It's a tempo that's, that's comfortable for you. Another way you can use this, and I wanna show this to you very briefly, is take the entire thing and use it as a rhythmic motif. Okay, what does that mean? Well, you can use this over an E major chord. Let's say you're playing in a, 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 with other guitar players and there's, somebody's playing an E major chord one way here, somebody's playing an E major chord one way over there, and you're thinking to yourself, gosh, I, I guess I could play an E major chord, but maybe I can try and add something different that adds a little spice. This is a great way to add that spice by not duplicating a chord that's already happening. You're hinting at it, and it's just a beautiful layer that you can add. Here's how this lick would sound repeated. couple extra times because I goofed up one of them. Uh, but anyways, you get the idea. It just creates this nice kind of lilting rhythm that would sit really wonderfully over a strummed E major chord. I hope you found this useful. And you know, in talking right here, right now, it made me think of something I want to remind you. There are, there, there is no cheating when it comes to your guitar journey. You know, this, this happens a lot when we think about, you know, something like bar chords, just something that's difficult, like a new technique, right? Using your thumb for, for every single note within a passage. There's no cheating, okay? If you, if you have to adjust things to make it work for you, that's okay, you have full license to do that. The litmus test here is, does it sound the way you want it to sound? If it sounds the way you want it to sound and you stay in time and you have good tone, then it's fine, it works, right? There's no cheating, there's no, there's no checklist that says, oh, you didn't do this, that, and the other thing. The ultimate test here is, does it sound the way you want it to sound? And if it does, keep doing that thing that helped you make the sound that you want to make. You know, if that means you take a full bar chord and you trim it down, you have license to do that. It still sounds just as much of a G as it did like this. Yeah, you lose some bass end, but if you're playing a chord progression with your friends and you pick this instead of this, you're still making music. It's not cheating. There are no shortcuts, right? Everything is a stepping stone to get further down the road. So I want you to, to remind yourself of that. When you're battling something difficult, when you're trying something new, maybe you adjust it a little bit. That's okay. It's not a fail. You didn't cheat. You're just taking those stepping stones that are necessary on your guitar journey. As a collective group of guitar geeks, let's press the rewind button and head back to episode 250, where I taught you the basics of two hand tapping on the acoustic guitar. Talk about a guitar style that really polarizes people, and that's okay, we're all entitled to our own opinion, but I think as guitar geeks, we can all take a step back and say, I like it, I don't like it, whatever the case may be, I still can appreciate it. I wanna look at a few comments from that episode. The first one comes from Gilbert Atchison. I think I said that right. I'm pretty proud of myself for that. Gilbert says this. Hi, Tony. Happy 250th. Have never missed your show from the get-go. You exterminated this show on a termiteful bang. You outdid yourself on this one. Thanks again. Gilbert, cheers to you, and uh, thanks for tuning in to all of the shows. And also, I love your incorporation of the termite resonator guitar. To, uh, to that wonderful little uh, a little closing comment there. You exterminated this show on a termiteful bang. Uh, if you've missed the termite guitar, you have to go back a couple episodes and check it out. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, Gilbert, thank you so much for watching, and thank you for wishing, uh, wishing the show a happy 250th. In fact, uh, pretty good milestone that I kind of just, well, glossed over. I get into the groove and I don't even look at the numbers anymore. It's crazy. We're coming up on a big anniversary next week. I'll tell you what it is, but uh, it's shocking. It shocked me, that's for sure. Okay, uh, next comment comes from Doug Bradine. Bradine, not sure which. Uh, he says this, I really like the teaching segments you've added to Acoustic Tuesdays. Also, the segment that shows how to incorporate the daily lesson into our playing. Both segments help my learning and enjoyment of the guitar. 
keep it up. Thanks, Doug, and I do believe I will keep it up. In fact, quick sneak peek into next week, actually not next week, the week after that, we'll be talking about cross-picking. I'll do a little bit of a, a teaching segment on cross-picking. So I'm glad you dig that, Doug, and hopefully uh, those of you who are watching also dig those teaching segments. Now, uh, this next comment is one that I implore you to explore. Again, this is from episode 250. It's by, uh, the comment comes from Masha T22. It's a rather lengthy comment, so I don't have a chance to read it all here, but I encourage you to check it out because it is her experience exploring and learning to hand tapping. And she cites a couple pitfalls in it that I think is really, uh, I think, you can fall into, and she's trying to help, well, other guitar geeks avoid them. Here's just the beginning of her comment. Hey, Tony, I'm so glad you did a tapping lesson. I've been trying to figure this tapping thing out for at least a year now. For people who are having trouble with this technique, I'd like to suggest what helped me get to an aha moment. I couldn't figure out what I was doing wrong on my acoustic guitar. I assumed that tapping literally meant just that tapping on the strings. After not producing any noise, I realized that this technique involved hammer-ons. And this goes on to explain much further detail of some things that, again, will help you out if you're trying to learn a two-hand tapping. So, uh, Masha T22, thank you very much for, uh, well, contributing to the, to the greater guitar geek good. Greater guitar geek good. I like that. It's a lot of G's. Very good alliteration. Uh, next comment comes from Sam Maynard. It says this, Hey Tony, long time fan. Also, you are in large part responsible for my guitar arsenal, which I am indebted to you for. I can't even imagine life without grabbing one of these instruments and going into a trance every day. But this finger packing, st this finger tapping stuff is terrible. Come on. Sam, uh, thank you for watching the show. And uh, cheers to you and your guitar arsenal, man. I, I think that's great perspective to say, you know what? I've got this guitar arsenal and I can't even imagine my life without it. And, and the, the goodness that it brings, the fulfillment that it brings. So Sam, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for that little note on your guitar arsenal. And yeah, finger tapping, not for everybody. That's okay. That's okay. But it's, it's, it's in the realm of acoustic guitar geekiness, so I had to include it on the show. I just had to. Uh, next comment comes from, the final comment comes from Trolls Journey, and uh, he says this, love that FERC guitar. Had to give you a thumbs up right away. Suggestion for future episodes. It would, it would be cool if you could give us a quick presentation of the guitar that you are using before you start playing it. Something like, this is the FERC Yellow Deluxe with Bevel Duo. It comes with a Sitka Spruce top and Rosewood back and sides. Done. Okay. Not sure if that's actually the name, but it sure looks like it. Thanks for the video and keep up the great work. Now, I selected this comment for two reasons. I've gotten a lot of requests for uh, some details about why I choose the guitar that I choose. So uh, keep your eyes peeled in upcoming videos. I will certainly go into a little detail as to what the guitar is and why I chose it. The second reason I chose this comment is that you pretty much nailed the guitar that I used. Now, I just received this guitar, and it is, I was gonna say mind-blowing, but that's something I just overuse. It is an elegantly beautiful guitar with a full sonic representation. Um, the only thing you missed, you said it had a Sitka spruce top, it actually has a cedar top. Uh, but everything else is right, rosewood back and sides, the, the double bevel, um, this guitar is beautiful. Great for finger style, great for alternate tunings, and a guitar that I continue to explore. Uh, so thank you for that comment. Thank you, everybody, for your comments. Now, uh, oh, something's come to my, my attention. And it's rather dire. It's a dire uh, announcement that I have to make. Uh, guitar geeks, I've run out of guitar signals. I've run out of guitar signals to share on the show. So now's your time. Now is your time. I wanna feature you, I wanna feature your guitar arsenal, and I wanna feature your musical stories on the Acoustic Tuesday show. So please, 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 if you've been thinking about it, now's the time. Now's the time to set up those guitars and take a picture. Now you're thinking, okay, I can do that, but how do I actually get featured on the show? Well, here's exactly how you do that. I wanna to propose to you a win, win, win scenario. I wanna feature you on the Acoustic Tuesday show. Yes, I wanna feature you and your guitar arsenal, or you and your Acoustic Tuesday merchandise. Step number one, go to tonypolacastro.com forward slash shop. Once you're there, pick out your favorite guitar arsenal shirt, your favorite Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, get it shipped directly to your door. 
Step number two, once your merchandise arrives, go ahead and put it on and take a picture of yourself, either just wearing Acoustic Tuesday merchandise, or if you have a guitar signal shirt, take a picture in front of all of your guitars. And then once you're done with that, step number three is to upload your picture at TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop. There's a link right on that page. Click it, you can upload your photo, and boom, you'll be featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number one, you get featured in the Acoustic Tuesday show. Win number two, you get some cool snazzy Guitar Geek merchandise. Win number three, the biggest win of them all, all proceeds from the TonyPolacastro.com forward slash shop are being donated to Guitars for Vets. You get featured in the show, you get cool new shirts, cool new merchandise, and you help out Guitars for Vets. Win, win, win. Okay, back to the show. Yes, it's time for your weekly dose of acoustic news you can use, and I am excited. I'm excited because of what I'm gonna share with you, but I'm also excited because tomorrow I leave for the Fretboard Summit, Fretboard Journal's Fretboard Summit in Chicago at the Old Town School of Folk Music. I am beyond excited. I can't wait. I can't, I probably won't sleep tonight. I'm like a, I'm like a kid on Christmas morning, Christmas Eve. Yeah, that's the night you can't sleep. Uh, but but seriously, if I don't know if there's tickets left, but if there are, I would strongly consider attending this. Um, it is going to be a weekend of guitar geekiness uh, uh, for the greater guitar good, if I can call back to that phrase. Um, we're talking workshops. We're talking 50-plus luthiers. We're talking uh, concerts. It's all happening over the weekend, the 25th through the 27th. I know for a fact Mule Resonator Guitars are gonna be there with the Mule Van. I know for a fact that Gage Halland, an incredible luthier who studied under Michael Greenfield from Livingston, Montana is gonna be there. I know for a fact Thompson Guitars from Sisters, Oregon are gonna be there. Uh, Molly Tuttle, the Mill Carton Kids, Courtney Hartman, I think Sierra Hall, uh, Julian Lodge, amongst many, many others. Uh, yeah, it's just gonna be a hell of a weekend. I am like I said, beyond excited to go. And I just wanted to uh, throw that out to you if you were thinking about it. Maybe I can push you over the edge a little bit. Uh, I'm excited to visit my old stomping grounds and um, just attend this festival as, as, and just soak it all in. I'm super excited. Uh, next up on my news list, I guess actually first up, is uh, you, may, you may be aware of this, but I just discovered this um, because... John Mayer has been holding a series of shows at Pine Creek Lodge in Livingston, Montana, like 40 minutes away from Bozeman. And uh, he's doing this as a benefit for the damage that the floods caused uh, in Paradise Valley. Now, I was unable to get a ticket to this event. I was super bummed, actually, a series of events. I was unable to get tickets. Uh, but I was able to stream these things on nugs.net, N-U-G-S dot net. This is a music streaming service in which this company films live shows as they're going on. And you can pay per show or you can pay a subscription fee and you can watch live shows from the comfort of your house. Let's say you live in Montana and there's a really awesome show going on in Chicago. You couldn't go to it, but nugs.net is covering it. All you do is log in, boom, you can watch the show right from the comfort of your own home. Uh, in fact, here's a quick example of the John Mayer show where he invited Bob Weir to come out and play with him. Very cool and uh, I think you'll see what I mean and how awesome it is to just view this concert from the comfort of your own home while it's happening. Here it is. Said I run, but take my time. A friend of the devil is a friend of mine. If I get home before daylight, I just might get some sleep tonight. Next up is one of my new favorite singer-songwriters, I guess within the last couple of years, Riddy Armin, a Montana singer-songwriter who, um, well, if you haven't heard her album, you have to, because it's just one of those ones that it does more than pull at your heartstrings. It like it like rips on them, like really really tugs on them good. Uh, but anyways, there's a, a mini documentary, a mini movie made about Riddy Armin. Let me go ahead and read you the the um, the description of it, and then we'll look at a, a quick little portion of it uh, from La Honda Records and Two Bridges Film comes the first in a new series called Western AF Presents, highlighting new documentaries that feature music, culture, and art in the, in the focus of staying Western in your own way. This was beautifully shot. And uh, I learned a lot about Riddy, her songwriting, her approach, and just her as a human. And I have to say that it's, it's a short film and it, 
it commands your attention. It really does. It's something that you should stop doing whatever you're doing and really sink into. I think it's about 11, 13 minutes long and it is worth every second. It's well shot. It's, it's, it really is, is very well spoken on not only her craft, but her upbringing, what influenced her, and uh, some of the things that, well, she deals with in, in the music industry. Uh, let's go ahead and look at a quick snippet of it right now. She's just who she is. I think that Rudy Harmon is an anomaly in the music industry. There's no one like her. She is writing music with such a thick emotional muscle that people can't contain what they feel. She's creating a vessel for her listeners to really understand who they are. The genre itself is about people's stories, real life. It's not about how many things you own or making cool sounds with digital instrumentation. It's just really simple music that is about folks' experiences. The reason I don't straight out say I play country music is because I've always been told I don't. I've never really tried, I just write my own music. Next up is something I read about, kind of heard through the grapevine. Uh, Caitlin Canty, another of my favorite singer-songwriters, is releasing a new album in the future. I saw an Instagram post from her that says, documenting these moments more for myself than anyone, listening to final mixes of my new record in Danby and the minivan. Cannot wait to share beyond these headphones. I'm so proud of how it turned out and so grateful to the folks who played on it and made it sound so good. Curtain call and credits in due time, but for now, woo. Uh, next up is a, well, it's just a meme that I found. I thought was absolutely hilarious. Um, it's it's focused around Tiger Woods, and uh, let me just go ahead. Let me just go ahead and play it for you. The the caption is when people ask me if I'm finally done buying guitars, and well, here's what Tiger Woods had to say. Me retire? No. <laughs> no 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 no. Who me retire? No. <laughs> no 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 no. Next up is some more new music for you. The Local Honeys. I've talked about them on the show before, but they just released a new album, and I think you need to hear I No, not I think. I know you need to hear it. Let me go ahead and read you what they wrote about their new album. We're honored to share our self-titled album today, released on LaHonda Records. We share the name because this album feels like our debut. Our voices and our hearts are the forefront of these 10 tracks. We work hard to represent our home and our people and do the work that brings good back home. We hope you feel that. Don't feel like we have the right words today, but we got it down on the album, so take that as our gratitude. We are forever in love with the people and the characters, both human and animal, that helped bring this creation in every aspect to life. Thank you. Keep on the sunny side, Linda Jean and Montana. Phenomenal. If you have not heard The Local Honeys, again, you need to. I, I always say that, but I, I don't say that lightly, and I never feel like it's just turn of phrase. I really mean that. Um, just a fantastic duo, great songwriting, incredible voices, and uh, yeah, you gotta check it out. Uh, next up on my list is, uh, oh jeez, Kyle Orla. Uh, Kyle Orla, Stringworks, I've mentioned him quite a few times uh, in recent past here on the Acoustic Tuesday show, uh, putting out some great videos. He just, <laughs> he just posted this reel on Instagram, and it is um, him covering Master of Puppets, the Metallica song Master of Puppets, Puppets, in an old time finger style, in an old time approach. Uh, he says, I call it Master of Finger Puppets. Uh, let's go ahead and give it a quick listen. From a fingerstyle song to a fingerstyle guitar. I have to let you know about this. Now, this was posted almost a month ago, but you have to be aware that Music Villa, the store right here in Bozeman, Montana, the one that I used to work at, just released a custom Gibson model that is perfect for fingerstyle guitar. Check this out. Exclusive release, the Music Villa designed Gibson LG2 Mahogany. Yes. Um, what do I say about this? What can I say? Brilliant idea, brilliant sounding instrument. Let's give it a listen.
Lastly, some guitar pyrotechnics for you. What happens when you put Mike Dawes and Tommy Emmanuel in the same room and ask them to cover, I don't know, Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen Spirit? Well, you're about to see and hear what happens. It's awesome. Uh, but I should also make mention of this. Tommy Emanuel is releasing the Accomplice Series Volume 3, which is with Mike Dawes. Here, um, it may be in a couple weeks, or it may be released already. I didn't check. This this little news clipping was done on July 13th, so it might be out already. Uh, if it's not, keep your eyes open for it. Um, yeah, two acoustic guitar greats. Um, well, here's how they sound together. And on those beautifully covered acoustic guitar notes, I think it's a great time to wrap up the Acoustic Tuesday show for today. But first, let's take a sneak peek into next week. And next week, I'll be sharing with you some must-watch music documentaries that came out in the last, I don't know, one or two years. Basically, what I want you to do is make a list because winter is coming. Game of Thrones reference. Winter is coming and I want you to be able to delight yourself in musical indulgence in documentary form. So I'll be giving you a list of must watch music docs next week. Remember you can catch Acoustic Tuesday every single Tuesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. And before I let you go, please do remember this. Your guitar success, however you define it, is directly related to your guitar routine. So please invest the time in developing your guitar routine and make sure to have fun every single day that you play. Thanks again for sharing your time with me today. Thank you for being a guitar geek and I'll see you next Tuesday on the Acoustic Tuesday Show. Cheers to you, be nice and play guitar.